back to the Roma One Popular Opinions, today's video is going to be the October wrap up. Now, the makeup may seem absolutely ridiculous and at this point resembles more of a dog or raccoon than what it was intended for. But that is what the Halloween vlog is for, so you can see the actual complete look. I still wanted to do something. This robe could maybe be like my yearly tradition or something, but I've been doing wrap ups for like half a year, two months at a time. But this time I think we should separate October because October through December are my favorite months of the year. So I think they warrant a bit more room for themselves. So this will be the October wrap up. Let's hope it actually is somewhat interesting because my reading has not been that. First off, I started out with the rest of the Lucky Lukes. I read, I have no idea which numbers they are, but anyway, I'm going to put up the picture of one of them. As I said before, I love, love this graphic novel. I grew up with it. It used to be one of my favorites, is still one of my favorites, so I don't have much to say about it, I guess. <laughs> Next up, I read the third volume of Uramichi. I finally collected them. And I used to think that there was just three volumes, so I was very surprised how, considering there are so many chapters, but these are all omnibuses, so this was technically five and six. I am appalled at the fact that this series isn't longer. I will buy anything that this author comes out with, and if they've canceled this series permanently, I might actually cry, because the amount of joy I derive from this series alone is insane insane i think i watch it a couple times a year and i read it twice now every year and i think i might do it even more often because of how much i love this humor this setting just these people in general i need more of them i desperately need more of them the only funny thing is that in the anime some stuff was either invented or wasn't in the manga. So I'm not sure if the author added it in or the anime people, but everything that was added in was a masterpiece. So I have nothing else to say. Top notch. The next two are a bit chaotic. And that is because I started university in October and I read many books just while commuting. So like I wouldn't sit down and read them, but I read them every day which is why my thoughts about them might depend on the day that I read them. But first up, we have The Forest of Wool and Steel. I think I started this many months ago, but I actually read and finished it now on my commute. I think I gave it, yeah, four stars. I gave it four stars, which means that I enjoyed it, but like a lower four stars, closer to like 3.5, 3.6. Because obviously the subject material means nothing to me. I want nothing to do with pianos. I don't like pianos. Like it's not a passion of mine. But the writing and the way that it was described was so simple that it was actually great like I vastly enjoyed this I thought it was a bit too short I feel like this story could have gone on for like 200 more pages but at the same time I liked where it ended it was a bit abrupt but I really liked where it ended this was a really cute very fun little book that I think you should give a try it's Japanese if I'm correct like yeah Miyashita it I think it's Japanese very cute little book that just feels very atmospheric even if you have nothing to do with pianos or you aren't musical at all. I don't know how to recommend it but I do think it's worth a read. It was quite nice how he like described sound evoking certain images. I would actually say it evokes feelings rather than images but yeah I really liked how he compared it with the forest and the mountains and everything. Very good read. Next up, which I'm not going to linger on this, but The Last Namsara. This reread was like planned for years and with regret, I have to say that it wasn't as good as when I first read it. Because the first time that I read it, I think it's important to know, I read it via audiobook and that narrator woman was phenomenal. Now I read it physically, it wasn't as good. <laughs> wasn't as good. That always brings me sadness to say but it's true unfortunately and I'm not gonna lie to you 
it's not one of my favorite books of all time anymore because it's you can tell it's her first book like it is very rushed everything feels like it needs to be done at a breakneck pace nothing is allowed to be processed or actually felt I remember I cried the first time I read it this time I didn't even think about crying because the whole scene was just done so quickly this just proves my entire point that if you've read an audiobook of a certain book you probably haven't had the same experience as reading it physically and you might like it a lot less because the dramatization and the voice and the emotion in the woman's voice was actually what made me emotional not the book itself so it just proves to me that maybe a lot of books that I liked that I listened to I wouldn't actually like as books themselves I just really like their narrator but yeah I still like the dragons not enough of them I don't mind the romance too much of it I like some of the fight scenes they are very few and far between and when they are there they are very chaotic like I just feel like this book either should have been longer or should have been an actual series because th this did not give it enough time to breathe like you barely learn to care about the main character before she has a real like a revelation that you don't know if she should have at that point you kind of just feel like someone's dragging you along on a journey that you're not sure you're really supposed to be on and just as soon as you think you might be attached to someone a dragon or human it goes another way like it just starts talking about something else so this needed a lot more room to breathe to actually be phenomenal and it wasn't as well written as I thought back then because again I listened to it so I didn't bump it down like a quite a bit I think it's like three stars now average because my enjoyment was the same but my criticisms were larger in numbers so I guess what I'm trying to say here is you can really tell it was her first book and I'm not sure if she improves with the others but I'm a little bit depressed that I felt this way because I remember being so happy to have finally found a decent dragon book when there are none of them out there that are actually about the dragons but that's okay I've read Ursula since Next up, I read Demon in the Wood. I pre-ordered it. It came like three weeks later than the pre-order, so you've probably heard someone talk about this already. I am not going to pull out the physical copy because I think you shouldn't be spoiled about the art style. I definitely was because I saw it in store before my pre-order actually came in, but it was a stunning, stunning graphic novel. Like, the Darkling story was, I feel, not unknown by any means, but... It used to be for a long time before the new editions came out just an ebook and a lot of people don't search up ebooks but a demon in the wood was my favorite bit of Grisha verse like the short stories actually contributed to my liking of the main story very much like this and the tailor were two of the main reasons why dark the darkling is my favorite character <laughs> like absolutely 100% you could ask me why and I would point you to those two stories so this was well adapted very nice the additions were a bit much I will say like a bit I didn't need the bit with the bear but it was very nice overall very well depicted stunning art style what they did with the colors in general this edition is freaking stunning like a hardcover graphic novel with foiling and everything it's a deluxe item. I don't think you need it. I don't think you need it unless you are a Grishaverse stan or a Darkling lover. If you are either one, it's worth it to get this. Next up, I just logged this on... I just logged this on Goodreads, so I will just mention it. I tried to read The Werewolf, A Legend of the Limousine by Richard Thompson. That's because I have the Penny Dreadful book. I almost died of boredom after like two pages and keep in mind that this isn't even that long I just wanted to note that I was so bored so bored I felt like I was reading a history book and not the good kind where you're actually kind of interested to see where it's going this was atrocious <laughs> the last of the pre-halloween books a controversial one because the land of unpopular opinions I knew what I was doing when I named my channel thus 
or rather my tagline, legends and lattes. Two stars, just two stars. I know what it was going for. Like it was recommended as like a mind, mind off, like take everything out of your head send it away and then read this book so you can i guess enjoy the casualness of it did not enjoy it like i did not enjoy it because i when i heard that it's a fantasy with lattes i already knew i already knew what was gonna happen it is so full of modern slang and modern words that i would not say are well integrated and i feel like anything negative you have to say about this book Everyone can refute it by saying, yes, but it's not supposed to be serious. You're just supposed to enjoy it. So to cut myself some slack, I will just say I didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy the ending. I didn't enjoy the characters that much. I didn't enjoy the setting. I didn't enjoy the idea behind it. Okay, you can say it's just subjective. I won't criticize it because I think anything I have to say can actually be refuted by you just saying that it's not supposed to be taken seriously. So I will say maybe you will enjoy it. Maybe it's just the thing you needed to read, but it was not a thing that I needed to read. It, it just was not. I was actually quite annoyed that I spent every morning reading this book. It wasn't difficult to read by any stretch of the imagination, but a lot of things that aren't difficult to read aren't difficult to read specifically because there's nothing there. So to move on from this, next up I read an actually good book, which was a middle grade Eva, 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 I'm not sure, Evergreen Semi-Magical Witch, middle grade, I loved it. This was marketed as Kiki's Delivery Service, which it actually is but phenomenal. I just loved the way it was written. Like for a middle grade, obviously I think it's a little unrealistic that it reads so adult, but I think I would have enjoyed it when I was younger too. It's absolutely just Kiki's delivery service, except like revamped, but I loved it. I absolutely adored the characters, their relationships, the animal companion, the magic style, and how even though it's whimsical and lighthearted, there's still some difficulty and some hardships that don't feel unearned it is a bit quick in the style that middle grades are but i absolutely enjoyed it i absolutely loved it and i'm happy that i read it during my commute especially in october because it's very very good and i just started reading book two so highly recommend this if you at all liked kiki's delivery service because this is that in book middle grade format. Lastly, for my Halloween wrap up, you will obviously see the video. So I'll just quickly run you through what I read. It doesn't matter what I thought of it. Now, I read Yates poems, and now we'll try and find the ones that I actually read. I read damn it. <laughs> I read September. And I read Cool Park, I think. That one maybe wasn't too related to Halloween or autumn at all, but I am trying my best. Hang on. Keats. This one I actually know which ones I read. So it was To Autumn and Bright Star Would I Were Steadfast, Steadfast As Thou Art. And then Shelley. I read Ozymandias and Ode to the East Wind. So you can know like which poems I actually read. Aside from that, I also read the first five volumes of Witch. The first one alone is Halloween-y, but the rest like which is magic powers. Like, I mean, it's called Witch and it's a nostalgic read that I read every couple of years. So absolutely love it absolutely recommend it but just until like the end of the arc that starts with volume 20 until that when that arc ends I would stop reading if I were you I think that's where I stop reading usually and then lastly I read a couple poems by Edgar Allan Poe I will try and find which ones I read again but I think I always reread The Raven because I love love that poem 
I also really like Fairyland and The Sleeper. Annabelle Lee. I mean, like the the classics, I guess, poem wise. So yeah, Edgar Allan Poe. That was the last thing that I read for Halloween. And with this, I can wrap up the video. But I just wanted to mention that yes, I am still reading The Shadow Rising. Don't even get me started on that. That is it for the video and for October and for Halloween. Happy Samhain, happy Halloween, happy All Hallows Eve. I hope you enjoyed it if you celebrate it. I hope you had fun even if you don't. I hope you had really good books to read this month because I feel like whether you theme it towards the harvest or autumn or cottagecore or Halloween or horror or whatever you theme it towards, I think this time of year is great for reading no matter who you are, no matter if you're thematic is just sitting down under a blanket with tea and a book if that's it I still think that you enjoyed this month and I hope you did so let me know what you've read in October this is the last Halloweeny thing I will take those down obviously tomorrow look forward to the vlog because I think this is going up first but I will try and put them both up like today or tomorrow and that is it. I hope you had fun and I will see you in the next video.